Eden Hazard to potentially return back to Stamford Bridge after his two-year stint at Real Madrid. We'll be delving into all the latest news in regards to Eden Hazard. We speak about Lukaku. According to Matt Law, Lukaku is now the favourite to sign for Chelsea. We'll also be speaking about Declan Rice. The latest update on him could a move be on the cards for Declan Rice. We'll be speaking about him. But before I do get into all of it, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment down below your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. But... Without further ado, let's get straight into this news daily. Starting off with Eden Hazard. Eden Hazard, Don Hazard. This came out of nowhere. This honestly came out of nowhere. Now, when we knocked Real Madrid out in the semi-finals of the Champions League, there were rumours that, you know, Real Madrid had enough of Eden Hazard with his injury problems, you know, his lack of respect for the club because, you know, he's pictured laughing with Zuma, even though I thought he was unfairly judged for that. Um... As a result, the Madrid fans want him out. Now, again, we thought nothing of it. It was just a rumour at the time. However, according to AS, AS is now a Spanish publication. It's essentially the mouthpiece for Real Madrid when it comes to Madrid news. They've got a fairly mixed history. You know, they've got some credibility. They have got some things wrong in the past. So, a mixed history. And they're stating that Eden Hazard is offered back to Chelsea. The operation would cost around £50 million and is very complicated. Thomas Tuchel is not worried about adding more wide players and the Bramwich is after earning Haaland, but a return of the star man for seven years would not be badly received. Now, I was on Twitter yesterday, scrolling through Twitter as you do through the timeline, I saw a couple of funny tweets and one of them was, it would just be typical Chelsea if we didn't get our number one target of earning Haaland, we didn't sign anyone and just to appease the fans, just to get the fans on side, we bring back legend Hazard just to take the absolute piss. Now, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, before I give my thoughts and opinions on if I would want Hazard to return, I, I just I don't see this move happening. I don't see this move happening, and mainly because we have other priorities. You know, at the time when Eden Hazard left, you know, we were doomed. We really wanted Hazard to stay. You know, we got hit with a, a tragic transfer ban. It was, a, it was an absolute travesty. However, we've moved on. Hazard's moved on, he's followed his dream, he's gone to Madrid, Chelsea have moved on, you know, at European Champions now. We're actually in a better position than Real Madrid because Real Madrid got a rebuild and we're also champions of Europe. But, you know, we've got other priorities. You know, we need to sign a world-class striker. That's why we're targeting the likes of Lukaku, Haaland, Kane, etc. We're looking up for a centre-back, we're looking for a midfielder for depth. He's not on the list. Hazard would be a luxury signing because he's not the player that the club are targeting. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, if Hazard ever came back, he would still have his benefits. He's still a very creative player. He would still be one of the best players in the Premier League. My, in, my major concern with Hazard, if he ever came, is two reasons. One, can we keep him fit? Because I believe that, you know, all those years in the Prem, getting nicks to the ankle, bruises, those injuries have racked up, those injections that he used to take to keep him fit when he was younger, he got away with it. Those injuries are caught up to him at Madrid. And he's simply not been the same player. And in two years, you know, being riddled with injuries, can, he, can you get Hazard back to his best? I'm not too sure. That question remains to be seen. And it is a gamble because you sign Hazard for £50 million. He's going to be on high wages. Yes, he's all lovely, jovely. Eden Hazard, legend back at the bridge. If you can't keep him fit, you're throwing money down the drain because he's not going to give you any service. He's going to be on the hospital bed like Usman Dembele is for Barcelona. So for me, I would love Hazard back, but only for a sentiment reason because I love the guy so much. I could never turn him down because Hazard is my favourite ever player. You know, as I grew up, throughout my whole teenage years, all I saw was Eden Hazard. Those seven years, all I saw was Eden Hazard. He is a legend. Like, without a shadow of a doubt, this guy is the greatest legend uh, in terms of technical ability at Chelsea. Of course, he's not our greatest legend, but he is up there in terms of one of our best legends. And in terms of actual talent and technical ability, Hazard, in my personal opinion, is our best ever legend. And what he provided for us, the fact that he carried us on our back for so many years, for seven years, won us so many trophies, countless times, saved us so many times, stayed loyal to the club. He loves the club. And for me, the talent that he has is a shame. You know, I would love for him to work out in Madrid. It hasn't been the case. And personally, I don't see this move, you know, materialising. I don't think that it is the right move. But if we sign him, I just wouldn't complain because I love the guy so much. But what do you guys think? Do you think Hazard will return back to Stamford Bridge? £50 million is the rumoured fee. What do you guys think? Let me, your, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Moving on to some other interesting news in regards to midfield and striker updates. Matt Law went on the podcast yesterday. Finally, finally, we got an update from Matt Law because he's currently on holiday. He went on a podcast, London is Blue podcast, and the latest transfer updates in summary goes, Chelsea are working behind the scenes on Romelu Lukaku, according to Matt Law. Now, in regards to Lukaku, we know that, you know, Lukaku's publicly stated that he would like to stay into Milan. He's very happy with the situation. He loves life in Milan. He's happy with the new manager, Simeone Inzaghi. 
Um, you know, of course, he's a, he's a champion of Italy now. You know, he's a Scudetto winner. Now, what Matt Law essentially said with the situation with um, the striker situation in general is Chelsea won't be signing a striker until Tammy Abraham leaves the club because they need to free up wages, they need to free up spaces, and they would ideally like to get the cells in before they splash out big on a striker. That's what, that's according to Matt Law. That's what Matt Law's confirmed. Matt Law believes that Chelsea must have a suitor for Tammy Abraham before signing a new striker. He also said there are still talks for Romelu Lukaku going on behind the scenes. Now, Simon Phillips, again, he's more of a reporter on Twitter, but he has got his source and the connections. He's confirmed on Instagram that Lukaku is in fact the favourite now. He's gone actually ahead of Erling Haaland to be the favourite to sign for Chelsea because talks has gone really well and the Haaland situation is looking unlikely because of the astronomical wages, the agent fees, yada yada yada, etc. So it's gonna be it's gonna be very difficult to land Erling Haaland, hence why Lukaku is back up in the radar. Now, again, I'm tired, man. I'm tired, you know. I keep speaking about Lukaku, I keep speaking about Haaland, I speak about Kane. You know, we've got five weeks left of the window. We've been linked to Lewandowski, we've been linked to Lukaku, Kane, Haaland. Listen, the Super Cup is in under three weeks' time. It's a trophy that's up for grabs that we need to win because we haven't won it under the Roman Abramage era. The season starts in less than five weeks. It's about time. The season starts in about three weeks. And we still haven't signed anyone this summer window. I understand this priorities. We're focusing on sales. Completely understandable. However, we need to get our act together. Let's hopefully... Let's understand, let's see if we are actually working behind the scenes. Of course, all Haaland is my first choice. Um, but again, if Lukaku happens, you know, he will guarantee a goal. So either way, we need to just back the club, back the manager, see what happens. Now, that is the latest on Lukaku. According to Matt Law, Lukaku is now the favourite, despite him publicly admitting that he would like to stay into Milan. If any club could convince Lukaku to leave Inter, it would be Chelsea because he has unfinished business. We already know now Lukaku is now potentially the favourite ahead of Haaland to arrive at Stamford Bridge. What do you guys think? Do you want to see Lukaku at Chelsea? Would you be against Lukaku signing for Chelsea? What are your thoughts, opinions? Leave them down in the comment section below. But let's move on now to Declan Rice, the midfield update. According to Matt Law, again, same podcast, he gave a midfield update. Declan Rice would reject a third contract offer from West Ham. He wants to be made aware of any bids made for him. West Ham have had... To have a serious think about any bid that came in over six million pounds because of the current situation. Now, basically, the latest on Declan Rice is he currently has, as it stands, three years left on his current contract. If West Ham don't sign him now, they have to sell him next summer. They they have two choices now. They either sell him this summer or they sell him next summer because if he's still refusing to sign any sort of uh, contract extension or new deal. You know, when you go under 18 months, that's when things get sticky because then your negotiating power decreases. You haven't got the power to command astronomical fees. And that's when Declan Rice gets the power. So ideally, they would like to sell him before um, before it, go, it goes towards the 18-month mark, essentially. And uh, basically, West Ham will consider offers of £60 million upwards of Rice due to the situation of Rice rejecting deals. Now, basically, what's happening is Rice was promised, according to ex-West Ham employee, Rice was promised signings by West Ham to bolster the squad and build a team around him. Now, West Ham so far haven't signed any players and they haven't kept their promise. As a result, as a result, Declan Rice has rejected contract offers. On top of that, he wants a bonus in terms of pay rise. He hasn't received that. West Ham haven't given him parity in terms of one of the highest earners. He's not been received that in a new contract. And as a result, Declan Rice is upset and hence why he's rejected the free contract offers. That's why Chelsea have come into the mix because he is, according to Matt Law, a long-term club target that we would like to sign uh, for, for midfield depth. And Chelsea are working behind the scenes to try and get West Ham done. Now, there were rumours by Fabrizio, there were rumours by Carefree Youth that Chelsea will be submitting a bid for Rice this week. We don't know how reliable that is. We'll have to wait and see on that. But it seems like, you know, we are going to be trying to attempt to sign Declan Rice this summer. So we'll just have to wait and see. Now, personally, you guys know my false opinions. I am against the signing of Declan Rice. It's not that he's a bad player because he is a good player. We've seen that, you know, his capabilities, um, his qualities at West Ham. But because of the difference in style of play for what we want to do at Chelsea, I think it's not necessary. Is he better than Jorginho? No. Is he better than Kante? No. Is he better than Kovacic? No. So when he walks into Chelsea, he's automatically going to be fourth choice. Yes. Is he going to provide midfield depth? Correct. However, if you're spending 60, 70, 80 million pounds for a backup midfielder, for me, that's a waste of money. There are so many better options that are cheaper that you can use for backup and for depth. There's no need to get depth than Rice. Secondly, he's very good at breaking up the play, just like N'Golo Kante. But under Thomas Tuchel, we're not West Ham, we're Chelsea. We're going to be dominating the majority of games. We're going to be dominating position. You need to be able to break lines. 
You need to be able to, you know, essentially have a high pass completion rate. You need to be able to progress the ball. If you look at his statistics and his metrics, it is nowhere near good enough for a top club to be able to progress the ball, break the lines. The metrics are simply not good enough for a top club. And again, that's something that can develop because he's young. But again, that is a gamble. You're spending 60, 70 million pounds on a player that's not suited to your style and in the hope that he will become that. When it's simply a risk, it's a waste of money and he's not even going to start for you. So for me, it makes no sense, but... Let's just wait and see what do you guys think. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see all of you guys for my next video. Peace.